bass drum of death was formed in 2007 in Oxford, Mississippi with founding member John Barrett. So today we're going to see how this lo-fi one-man band project came up and how they would slowly become a very popular garage punk band. This is the hottest band in the world, Bass Drum of Death, our history. John Barrett was born on July 14th of 1988, and when he was about seven years old, he moved to the town in Oxford, Mississippi. John was a very active kid, playing many sports through his youth, like basketball, and he was a big fan of football too. When he was about four years old, his mom really pushed him to learn music. He first started taking cello lessons, and they taught him to learn the Suzuki method, which is learning to play music by ear. He said this really helped later on when he taught himself how to play guitar and drums. His mom also made him take piano lessons, and later on he said he never really stuck with it, and he kinda regrets it. John got his first guitar when he was 10 years old on Christmas, and his younger brother Jim received a drum set that same year. They would switch off playing each other's instruments. John sometimes would play drums and Jim would play guitar and slowly John would master both instruments. Going through his teen years, John didn't play in a lot of bands. He played in a couple bands in high school. He just really enjoyed jamming out by himself in his room. Eventually after high school, John would attend the University of Mississippi which was in Oxford, so it was fairly close by. Supposedly, he even had a basketball scholarship. While attending Ole Miss, he would meet one of his close friends and future drummer, Colin Sneed. Colin actually played in a band called the Sleepwalkers, and John would fill in and play drums for them when needed. When John wasn't filling in for Colin's band, he was starting a project of his own. He started recording music in the basements that he was living in with only his laptop computer and using the program GarageBand, a USB microphone, actually a Snowball Yeti to be exact, a bass drum, and his guitar. And he eventually would name his project John Barrett's Bass Drum of Death. He thought of that name because one of his friends also had a solo project called Magnificent Ukulele, and John wanted to go in the complete opposite direction, and he thought Bass Drum of Death was just kind of funny and it was not serious at all. He officially started this project in 2007, when he was about 19 years old. While John was going to school and recording his music, he actually was working three part-time jobs. He was working for a catering company, moving furniture, and he was also working for a record label, Fat Possum, which was based out of Oxford, Mississippi. After working there for a while, he would become pretty good friends with the guys at Fat Possum, and John would be showing him his demos and his music and whatnot. After all of his hard work for them, they tossed him a bone in a way and released his first single through Fat Possum Records. And the first singles, two of them, were called Stain Stick Skin and The Ballad of Bandit X. John's style was very unique for the lo-fi garage rock scene that was building during that time period. He mixed the lo-fi sunshine punk sound with blues guitar licks. Obviously with his upbringing coming from the south, he definitely was inspired by blues music. These first two songs were released in 2008. Eventually, John would drop out of college after being there for a year and a half. He started receiving more touring opportunities and went forth with it. He also said he's been touring since he was 17 years old. I'm not really sure if he started Bass Drum of Death when he was 17 because it said he started in 2007 which would mean he was 19. Not really sure what that in between era he was doing though. When he first started touring, he said it was just him. Sometimes people would randomly join in but it was predominantly just John. John would also release an EP in 2010 called High School Roaches. And I'm not really sure if he released an EP prior to anything because I saw on his Instagram saying that this picture was the first EP art that he used, but I couldn't find it anywhere on the internet. And for the High School Roaches EP, I found this artwork. So I'm not really sure where this artwork is from. Anyway, there was four songs on that album. 
and three of them would actually be re-released on their upcoming LP, GB City. I'll get into that in a minute. And the only song that wouldn't be re-released is a song called You're Haunting Me. I'll talk about the rest of these songs on the upcoming album. John was still touring a lot, and he realized not a lot of people were coming out to see his shows. He sometimes would stop in the same city twice, and still not that many people. But once he started releasing the EPs and his full LP, a lot more people would be showing up. John would also change the name of the band from John Barrett's Bass Drum of Death to just Bass Drum of Death because he finally had a regular touring member and that was Colin Sneed. Like I was saying before, Colin was in that band The Sleepwalkers, the one that John filled in on drums sometimes. Colin would also later drop out of college. John would eventually want to release another EP, but he had so many extra songs, he released a full LP. And on April 12th of 2011, GB City was released through Fat Possum Records. The theme of the album was basic 20 year old shenanigans going on with John talking about how he's trying to get with religious girls, doing drugs, stealing things, mild depression, panic attacks, Elvis Presley appearing in your dreams, and him giving you advice, and also a fun fact, Elvis was actually born in Mississippi, and the devil living in your brain. Also, GB City? Do you know what GB stands for? <laughs> yeah, gravity bong, motherfuckers. If you don't know what a gravity bong is, uh, basically it's like a homemade bong you can make. Fairly easy, I'm not gonna explain it because doing drugs is bad, kids. So, of course, this album is very lo-fi and distorted like fuck, but hey, isn't that cool? Garage rock, cheap sound, that's what I love. Kind of similar to our buddy uh, Nathan Williams from The Waves. If you compare any of the first two records of Waves to this record, very similar. Bass drum of death, less distorted. Waves, way fucking more distorted. Obviously, early Ty Siegel stuff as well, and Jay Retard. He had to have taken influence from these guys for sure. So yeah, if you're trying to get into bass drum of death and you like the garage rock feel of things, Hop into GB City, got some dope ass tracks on there. GB City is one of my favorite. Feels like it has like this Japanese Chinese intro with the guitar riff going on in the beginning of it. Young Pros is also a song to check out. Has a little bit of a doo-wop sound to it. Nerve Jamming as well, obviously one of their most popular songs. Same with Get Found. Get Found wasn't my favorite song, but it is one of their more popular ones. Anyways, this album would gain them a lot of attention and would actually get them a six 6.2 rating on Pitchfork, which doesn't seem high, but that is pretty high for Pitchfork. And John was extremely proud of the work he's created and how much attention it brought him. He thought his music recording was really unique because not a lot of people in Mississippi were recording the type of music he was. So of course, after they released this, they embarked on their US and European tour. Just like our good friend Waves, he toured as a two-piece and so did Bass Drum of Death. A lot of similarities between these guys and they would eventually add second guitarists to the band like Trent Choteu I think I said that right not a hundred percent and in 2014 they eventually had Josh Hunter so bass drum of death would tour for almost two years straight and when they would get home everyone was pushing John to make a new album and they're like when the fuck is it coming out man John felt very overwhelmed about this and would cause him a lot of anxiety and you could see in his songwriting there's definitely some anxiety there. So eventually our boy JB would throw down some tracks for that next upcoming album. And again, he recorded this all by himself. And I feel like he might have wanted to do something different. But again, people were barking for a new album. So he just recorded the same thing over again. Also, by the way, Colin left the band in 2012. Also on the next upcoming album, John would make the switch from Fat Possum Records to Innovative Leisure Records. He released two singles before the album came out called White Fright and I Don't Know. But I Don't Know didn't make the full LP cut, he just scrapped the song. But god damn, this song is fucking awesome. Go check it out, it's on YouTube. So later on June 25th of 2018, John released his self-titled album, Bass Drum of Death. And it's honestly kind of interesting that his second LP is called Bass Drum of Death. Usually the first record you release is your self-titled record, but fuck it. 
John Barrett doesn't give a fuck. Before releasing the record, John played the final version of it in his car, and he said his car had a shitty sound system, so as long as it sounded good in there, he was satisfied with it. And he actually played a release show at Proud Larry's. And this LP literally sounded exactly like the last one. It honestly feels like an extended cut, with the similarity between songs on both albums, all the way down to the album covers with Smoke coming out of his mouth, but surprisingly this is their popular album release to date. And I don't really get that, cause I feel like GB City deserves it more than this one. Don't get me wrong, this is a great fucking album. The opening track, I Wanna Be Forgotten, definitely wasn't a forgettable track, with the Spitfire delivery, screaming buy a car, get fucked, be dead, god damn the angst is real. Shattered Me is also a kick ass track, seems like he's talking about a girl trying to rekindle something that's been broken beyond repair. Whatever hopes he and his partner once had have been decimated and now they must dwell on the past. The next song, Such a Bore, John dives into the psychedelic side of things, but the opening guitar lick kinda reminds me of early Rolling Stones songs. The next song, No Demon just has a beat that makes you want to get up and jump up and down and push some fucking people around. Seems like he's talking about a girl, but the lyrics are very forgettable with him just repeating that's what I say. And then the next song, Crawling After You, which is the most popular song that they've really ever recorded. Also, by the way, that's a track on the soundtrack of GTA 5. The song hits hard with the amazing guitar riff that comes fucking at ya. Barrett is singing about a girl that that never truly was there. One where she didn't feel for him. He longs for her and can't accept that she isn't interested. While well, he goes on dreaming and thinking about her, he simultaneously forms an idealized version of her that takes root in his thoughts and clouding any sort of judgment he can make about her. And the album ends with a forgettable track, You'll Never Be So Wrong. Honestly, this album was good, but I still don't see why people like this one more than GB City. I felt like GB City had a lot more bangers than this one if you want to say. I still love the lo-fi garage rock feel from these two albums though. Literally sounds like they could have all been recorded in the same time period. I don't know if it's just me, but I'm finding more similarities with Waves and Bass Drum of Death than I've ever really found before. Also, look at this song, No Demons. Does it Waves have some songs with demons? Beach Demon, Weed Demon, whatever, whatever. Also, Such a Bore. Does a waves have a song called so bored um what else oh yeah they got an unreleased song called dregs to the dregs waves maybe i'm just being an asshole but i'm finding similarities very well between these bands all right all right i'll shut the fuck up about my hard on for nathan william anyway john would tour the rest of 2013 and he would eventually find a new drummer len Clark. After a while of touring, he would put down some tracks for the upcoming record. He recorded it just like the last two records, but these were just demos and they would never see the light of day. Once John recorded all the demos for the upcoming record, him and Len finally traveled to Sonoma County in California, a little north of San Francisco, where they were going to record their third LP with Jake Portrait from Unknown Mortal Orchestra. Bass Drum of Death would actually tour with them. And that's how John and Jake met. When they went to go record the album in the studio, Jake actually knew the owner of the studio, and he cut them a pretty good deal. And later in that year, on October 7th of 2014, Rip This was finally released. Unfortunately, this album didn't live up to the expectations of the older fans. The thing that really sucks is that this album literally sounds like their prior albums, but with a facelift and a cleaner sound, obviously, they were in a real recording studio. John's vocals are a lot brighter and more comprehensible. It's not like they sold out and started making pop music. This literally is a rock album. Just because the record is more polished and the riffs are more laid out and accessible, when it kicks off with the first track, Electric, it's just ear-piercing distortion and feedback, and it's a snarling transition into the next song, Left For Dead. The song For Blood seems like one of the most similar tracks to their prior work, and he actually says, rip this in the lyrics, the song Sin Is In 10 has a lone guitar with distortion and I'm pretty sure he's using a whammy bar to get that effect and he's hitting the same chord over and over and over. One of the next songs, Burn My Eyes, which is my favorite song on the album, the intro lyrics say 
way I've always been about the chase and the way this song goes the speed of it sounds like you're speeding down the street in a car just a high energy song that really gets you pumping he would also record an acoustic track called better days and that's the first acoustic track he's ever done on anything damn this reminds me of something from together Pangea's battle act the guitar has that full alternative rock sound i know that makes no fucking sense anyway the last song route 69 yeah yeah again it was also a pretty good song this was probably my second favorite song on the album and that pretty much wraps this album up after this well i guess a little prior to this album john moved to new york city he always dreamt of moving there he also just broke up with a girl and he thought it would just be better to distance himself from her he moved around to many different spots in new york he lived in williams Greenpoint, Bushwick. Going into the following year, they would be playing shows, but on May 19th of 2015, John made a post on Instagram saying that the band is on hiatus due to personal issues. John also said in 2016, he was homeless for a little bit and was just couch hopping from his friends' houses, and Len would actually leave the band. And later on, they would have a new drummer play, Eric Parisi. I'm still pretty confused on why he said they went on hiatus, because because on June 23rd of 2015, he posted some tour dates with the band Royal Blood. I don't get why he just said, oh, Len is leaving the band, but maybe he literally thought that they would be done for a while. But the hiatus definitely foreshadowed their lack of releases, and they would eventually release something in 2018, but they were pretty quiet up until then. While the band was quiet, John still was writing a lot of music, and he said writing songs in New York was more natural, and he was a lot more inspired by the city he hates to practice in new york it's such a fucking bitch he says you have to rent out a practice space wake up take the subway get down there and then play for a little bit and then take all your gear and go back into your shitty apartment well back in mississippi he liked mississippi more because he could just wake up and walk down to the basement and all his shit would be there after a very slow process john hit about 30 songs that he was devoted to and that he demoed and he loved and he wrote a lot of these in mississippi he connected with these two producers who had this production company called the heavy two people running that were jason bell and jordan miller and later john would actually record this new record in new york with them and on july 27th of 2018 just a business was released through century family record and the album kicks off off with Third Coast Dreamin'. This song is a little bit more popular and modern, but it still hits hard with that sludgy sound. He also mentions Union Pool is a meat market, and Union Pool is a quote-unquote hookup bar that he says he's used to go to. The next song, Too High, seems like he's talking about an addictive personality or addicted to a drug, that he has a splinter in his head and he's trying to feel like he's alright. Used to feeling faded, been here a thousand times, but then again, it could be about a girl too. And with the end of that song, it transitions to Diamond in the Rough, meaning someone with good qualities that are hidden. And this one's obviously about a girl. And then the next song, something he's never recorded before. I, and I bet all the older listeners, were scratching their heads when the intro is just a fucking church organ. Again, he sounds like a pop singer in this, and I get that the band wanted to try a different approach, but this song was a little weird for a garage band, but... Hey, fuck it, right? Anyway, going over that <laughs> hiccup, uh, the next song, Odds Are Good, was one of the most challenging songs to record, he said. Did about 8 to 10 takes, and it was nothing like he ever recorded before, and he also said that about the prior song, Heavy. This song gave me a twang doo sound, which would also be similar to their later track, I Thought I Told You, which was my favorite track on the whole album, and the title track, Just Business, is also a very catchy earworm. And it sounds like he's talking about sex. If it's just business, then I just really want to know. His dad liked the title of the album because he's a banker. So that wraps up this album, and I'm not really sure if it's because they took the time off. People liked this album way more than they liked Rip This. And again, that could have been just because of the four-year hiatus without any music. Eventually, while going on tour, John would have his younger brother Jim come in and play guitar for him. And Jim was in a prior band called 
young buffalo and i'm pretty sure he dabbled in some solo stuff as well the weird thing about this band is they never had a bass player obviously bass drum of death you think they would have a bass player but they don't john says he uses some distortion pedals while playing live to make it emulate a bass player and eventually he says he wants to have a bass player come in but who knows if they ever will so yeah well i guess that kind of wraps it up so fun facts bitches okay okay i know a lot of you are like well what about sunset overdrive and garage slim shut the fuck up i'm getting to that anyway they had a compilation album which was for adult swim called garage swim and they released an unreleased song i guess eventually which was called dregs check this out motherfuckers also made a song for the video game sunset overdrive like the song smell the night i'm on the run and between the lines these are some fucking badass songs definitely not forgettable i think we can all decide that john barrett has one of the most sexiest and badass fucking guitars out of any band i've done it's a 1967 Greco. Greco? Greco? 1967 Greco? I don't know. I mean, one of the first songs he ever learned on guitar was Smell Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana. He is also very influenced by Nirvana, Black Sabbath, and the Ramones. One of his favorite drinks is Jack and Coke. He helped the band Royal Bloods write a song called Lights Out, and his dream venue to play is the Great American Music Hall. And now let's go into my top five favorite songs. We got off their first record, GB City and Young Pros. And off of their second record, I got Crawling After You. And then after their last LP, Just Business, I have Just Business and I Thought I Told You. Anyway, guys, that wraps up this video. I hope.